Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. Today we are in Hemet, California, at a shop called California Auto Works. This shop is owned by my old shop foreman, and he actually asked me to come by so we can do some dyno testing today. So today we're going to be going through the Daytona Sensors TCS-1 ignition controller, and we're going to be enhancing the timing on my 1973 Dodge Charger. For those of you that don't know, this has been an ongoing project, and this last time at the track, I was brutally defeated by another YouTuber. His name was No Bolts Left Behind. So in order to pull more power out of the car, we're going to go ahead and do some dyno testing and see how much power ignition timing is actually worth. It's about 103 degrees inside the shop right now and the engine is having a hard time cooling itself down. So we're going to be installing a permacool single fan just to keep the temps down in between the dyno runs or else I'm going to be puking coolant all over his dyno. And I don't think he's going to be too happy when that happens. Uh, I don't know actually. So it stops pulling and then let go? Probably. I, it should be like around 6,500, 5,500. Did Pretty, it go that high? I don't know. Actually... Where's your tag? I don't have one. Right. Just go to like 5,000. Gained one, it gained one horsepower yeah, once, once. and lost one pound of torque. Yeah. yeah. It didn't really do anything. Well, otherwise, it sounded better. I don't yeah, know. it sounded better. Let's uh, go up in timing two more. Yeah. Let's see if it picks anything up and then if it doesn't, then that's all she's got. That's all. all right. 34 degrees. I'm going to stand over here this time. Making any more power, huh? Well, I that's think it. We lost it. Yeah, we lost power. Yeah. And that's with the colder engine. Uh, I think our magic spot's probably like three degrees ago. 
All right, so these are our final numbers, starting off with 28 degrees, which is in green, and 30 degrees, which is in blue. We're looking at 211 and 216, so that was a gain of five horsepower and about eight pounds of torque. After that, we went up to 32 degrees, and that brought us up a little bit higher. And then what we did next, we actually took the spring out because I suspected that the secondaries weren't fully opening by the end of the run. And after I pulled the spring out, we realized that no, the springs were actually functioning the way they were supposed to. There was The two runs were virtually identical, 223 and 258 versus 222 and 259, which it really didn't do anything. It did make the secondaries open up a little bit faster, but it didn't do anything on the dyno. So I'm probably gonna put that spring back in. And then we're gonna go ahead and close off the one without the spring. And then we're gonna open up the last run and this was at 34 degrees. At 34 degrees, we actually lost power again to 216 and 249, which is a huge loss in power, uh, almost back to where we were at 30 and 28 degrees. So it looks like the sweet spot is actually 32 degrees, and that's the way we're gonna keep it. So these were our final gains doing the timing adjustments. We gained a peak of 11 horsepower and we gained a maximum torque of about 17 pounds of torque. And it's not just at the top or the bottom, it's all the way through. Hopefully this makes somebody realize that you do need to get on the dyno and do a little bit of tuning in order to dial in your car. If you were just, just to set it up, heads up at 34 degrees, you might be missing out on power. So we found the sweet spot is at 32 degrees and that's the way we're gonna leave it. So I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.